Hello everyone and welcome to your Glass Node on Chain 101, where today we're looking at a brand new metric that's just come out today called the Accumulation Trend Score. Now this is a metric that boils down a number of concepts, including the size of entities that are accumulating coins, as well as whether there's a large portion of the market that are currently adding to their balance. So let's get started. So what the accumulation trend score tries to address is the nuance and the complexity of trying to track when accumulation is happening. And what it does is it boils it down to two different concepts. The first one is what we call the participation score, which is thinking about how big an entity is. Are they a whale right now? Are they a very, very small shrimp? And overall, how large is the entity relative to all of the wallets that are out there? Now, the second thing we include is what we call wallet balance change, which is looking at each of those entities. If you're a whale with 10,000 coins and you add one coin, it's not a very, very large accumulation amount. However, if you're a whale with 10,000 coins and you're adding 5,000 coins, that's a large balance change. So it combines not only the size of the entity, but also how many coins they're adding relative to their current holdings. And it tries to distill this down into a fairly simplistic, colorful chart. And the idea here is we're trying to look at where we're getting zones of accumulation, zones of distribution, and really boil down all of the complexity into a relatively simply digestible metric. So what we're going to look at is an analysis of the bull and bear market structure, how this metric's performed. We're going to spend a bit of time up front to actually look at how it was constructed using Glassnode Academy. And this particular session is for advanced members. And you'll find that this metric is available for our tier two members. So it's really trying to provide that additional tool to just understand what's going on in the bigger picture. Now, before we get started, please do give this channel a like and a subscribe. It really does help us along. And do leave us a comment and let me know what you think about this metric if you've started looking at it um, and if you do have any questions about it as you get started. So as I mentioned, we're going to start here in Glassnode Academy and we're looking at the accumulation trend score. So as I mentioned, it's indicator which tries to reflect the relative size of entities. That's how much they currently own in terms of coin supply. And it also tries to assess whether they're accumulating or distributing their coins. So as an indicator overview, when we look at this thing, what it's trying to capture is for a score that's closer to one, which if we see down here is more of these purple, darker colors, that's showing when the, over the last month, over the last 30 days, these larger participants, so remember this is talking about whales and larger accumulators, or remember, one whale could also be met by the same force as lots and lots of smaller holders. So when we see a large part of the network or a number of large participants in aggregate, when we look across the entire network, are most of the coin holders currently accumulating? That will return a value closer to one. Now, the other side of that, these yellow colors, these warmer oranges, this is showing a score closer to zero, which is the opposite of that, which is showing that over the last month, larger participants are not accumulating as many coins. It doesn't necessarily mean distribution. What it does mean is that their balances are not changing. We're not seeing accumulation. So this particular metric is looking at the accumulation side of the equation. It is the inverse of if we were looking at a distribution case, but generally it will return a score closer to zero when they are not accumulating or when they're distributing. So when their balance change is negative or when there's simply not much going on. So to try and understand a bit more about how this thing is actually measured, we're gonna break it down to the two key components. So for each day, we look at each entity's participation score. Now this is looking at, let's say we have an entity that owns 10 coins. And if we have a coin supply of 100 coins, that would mean that they currently have a participation score of 10%. In other words, if we look at all of the coins in the supply and there's one entity with 10% of them, then their participation score is that amount, it's 10%. Now, bear in mind that we are excluding exchanges and miners here. So we're only looking at individual entity wallets. We're actually removing all of those exchanges and miners who are more or less going to skew the data if we look at those uh, otherwise. Now, for each of those entities, now that we understand how big they are relative to the current coin supply, we then have to look at how much of their balance are they accumulating. So if we think about it, that's really limited. We have up to 100%, have they, have they doubled their total allocation? Or on the other hand, are they selling 100% of their allocation? So we look at their current balance and are they adding to it up to a limit of 100% or are they distributing the entire amount, which again is bounded at a total of negative 
And then what we do is we combine those two concepts across the entire network for every entity that's in the system. We look at their total balance change, we look at how large they are, and then we do a number of computations that normalize the data and turn it into something that is a distilled market-wide metric. So now we've jumped across into Glassnode Studio and we are looking at the accumulation trend score metric. Now you can see here that we've got these darker colors which is showing that large scale accumulation values closer to one. And we've got these yellow zones which is more of a distributive or lack of accumulation that's going on. Now the way they wanna explore this, we're gonna start with the first half of Bitcoin's life all the way up to 2016, because we have to remember that Bitcoin's gone through a number of different life cycles and the different participants had different behavior patterns at different times. Now I typically use that 2016 period to kind of break apart the prehistory of Bitcoin or the early phases and the later stages where we have more of the more market participants, more awareness, uh, more derivative markets. It's a slightly different market structure following that 2016-17 bull run and certainly from that point onwards. So I'll normally split it at around the 2016 level. Now, what we can see is that during the very early phase of Bitcoin's life, we can see that there were many folks who were buying all the way into the top. This is showing that there was this kind of excitement. Bitcoin's got this first price. And remember, we're going from 10 cents up to $100 at this point in time, which if you can imagine being there would have been a pretty exciting time. And this is before TradingView had any kind of implementation. There was no price charts. People were really trading on some you know, fairly interesting and dynamic exchanges at this point in time. It wasn't the same infrastructure that we're all used to today. Now, following that, you can see that during these bearish periods, it really quietened off. We move into this yellow and orange phase, but note how it really starts to heat up when investors see value, and it's typically down near the bottom. And we see a large amount of accumulation go on, and then we move back into the next trend. And we can see this played out throughout 2013. We had another rally of large accumulation into the top. This is when Mt. Gox exploded back in 2013 and then went insolvent, and we can see that we started to move back into that lack of accumulation or distri distribution phase. Now, what's quite interesting, you can see these folks here, back here in, uh, in early 2014, where they actually bought the dip, and interestingly, you may have seen this before over the last 12 months, it didn't turn out to be the dip, it was simply a dip. And you can see that we then went back into a distribution phase, which then eventually came down and created the macro bottom. Now, this macro bottom in 2015 was about a year long, and you can see it went through periods of accumulation, into distribution, accumulation. This is really the crux of a bear market. This is where participants are seeing it rally, they think it's the bull, and then they get flushed out again. And there's this year long of pain of trying to work out, is a bottom in or is it not? Lots of people come in and they just get bored. And then we get other people who are stepping and going, I see value. So it's this kind of tussling between the bulls and the bears that develops this long-term sideways consolidation range, which in many ways is a little bit similar to what we're seeing in the current market structure. So let's jump across to our more modern history. And again, this is picking up the back end of the 2017 run. And we can see through all of 2017 that we have these large accumulation phases into a correction. Now, there is a way to interpret this. We can look and see that this accumulation typically does carry on for a period of time until it hits the tops but then also signals that people are in fact buying the top. So it's almost got a bit of a lifespan. There's only so long that these trends can carry on before things get too hot and they have to blow off. So we can see that this actually moved, particularly in the 2018 market, we can see a very distinct change between consistent buying power all the way through the bull. Note how it absolutely dried up in 2018. We went into a full zone of yellow and orange, and really it didn't recover until we had our capitulation event in November and December. So we can see a very, very cool market. This is distinctly a bear lasted for a long period of time. We didn't get these intermittent bursts of demand and then putting in a bottom and then away we went again in a bull. This was very much a cool period. Very, very few people found demand for Bitcoin during that time. Now note that the November and December, we can actually see why this bottom got put in. There was a huge amount of accumulation, even though this was a large scale sell-off. And we look at a number of metrics, whether it's lifespan or transaction volume, there was a huge amount of capitulation going on during this period of time. And we can see that we had, we turned to this bull market, this consistent demand through 2019. 
we had this miniature this miniature bear face, but what I do want to highlight, see the difference in color between 2019 and 2018? 2019 is very much an intermix. Some people are buying, some people are selling, but it's certainly got a lot more accumulation going on, even into the March 2020 event, which again was very similar to this November, December period. So 2019, even though it was a miniature bear, there was a lot more accumulation going on. Even though it went on and off and hot and cold at different times, there was far more observable accumulation than anything we saw in 2018. So it showed that maybe the tides were starting to turn. Now, following the March 2020 event, there's a very significant amount of accumulation. You can see that we really, there was strength all the way up. Similar to 2019, there was still uncertainty. It wasn't quite full purple full trend score of one, but it was certainly nothing like 2018, which was basically a full trend score of zero. And we can see the early bull market buying. There was a huge amount of demand all the way into the January peak. But note also that our topping pattern here was very, very soft. We can see the top pattern and actually most of 2021 was actually quite soft in terms of net accumulation. It looks much the same as what we saw back here in 2018. So interestingly, even though we set the bull market highs up here in April and then we returned to them again in October and November, note how that period looks very similar to 2018. When we look at this, you could almost argue that this bear market maybe even started as far back as February. And this is in terms of overall accumulation behavior. And remember, if you've watched some of our videos in the past, you'll see that on-chain activity absolutely collapsed following that May period and actually really peaked here in January. So we can see that not only is on-chain activity, but also now the accumulation volumes were peaked in January and really slowed down from there. So now let's actually return to our current market structure. And what I want to highlight, note how we've actually been in accumulation for some time. And we're kind of in this 2019 in-between phase where it's certainly not the coolness of 2018. Where we are at the moment is kind of a balance. Almost there's a bit of accumulation. There's also a little bit of distribution. Feels like that 2015 style bottom. It feels a little bit like 2019. And really, we're trading sideways. So it shows that there's this kind of balance at the moment, this equilibrium of bulls and bears. And we've seen this accumulation that happened following the October high. Now, remember, all of the folks who got flushed out during this May period back in 2021, it really has been a hodler's market ever since. So many of this, much of this accumulation that we're looking at, and we've covered this in our week on chain videos, are more than likely the hodler class. They're people who are much less price sensitive. There's always going to be people in the mix who are going to be price sensitive, but hodlers are typically less so. So it makes sense that we're seeing a stronger accumulation behavior. It's still not full bull mode where we see these massive spikes of overall accumulation into a sell-off and then we rally higher again. We're not there yet, but what we are seeing is more of a 2019 style pattern, more of a 2015 style pattern, and quite often, the real deciding factor in all of this is time. It takes time for the market to digest these moves. It takes time for it to work out what's going on and then also overlaying all of the macro and geopolitical that's going on at the moment. But certainly this metric is there to try and just unpick and understand what the market is doing, what the accumulation style looks like and who is participating in it. So thanks for tuning in for this session. Do be sure to check out the accumulation trend score in Glassnode Studio. You will find the link to this in the description below. And just to really summarize this, this metric is trying to distill the complex and nuanced analysis of accumulation. And it tries to capture whether they're whales or whether it's a large portion of the market, looking at that participation score and combining it with the overall wallet balance change. And what it's trying to do is distill all of these entities across the entire market to try and identify where we actually have these characteristics of accumulation, which will give a score of one, it'll be those purple colors, or when we're seeing not necessarily distribution, but a slowdown of accumulation. It can be either distribution or it can be a slowdown of accumulation. We'll trend closer towards that value of zero. So thanks for tuning in. Please do give us a like. Let us know what you, uh, what you enjoyed in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.